Hi, this is Pam, Pamela Gropi Art, used to be Flower Patch Farmhouse. I've switched uh, to an all art blog, which I've just called Pamela Gropi Art. Um, this tutorial, it, or this video, is a remake of my basic strokes video I had done before, but the sound quality on it was very poor. And this goes along with my website post. Um, it's a tutorial on basic strokes as well. Now this is the brush I'm using. This is a plaid one stroke Donna Dewberry uh, flat brush. I get these in a package of 10. These are very good brushes for stroke work and relatively inexpensive. You don't need a pricey brush to do good stroke work. A lot of people think you do, but if you take good care of them, they will last you a long time. This set I've been using for about two years and I paint frequently. Uh, now, the paints I'm using, this is Plaid Folk Art Multi-Surface in uh, Eggplant, no, Perfect Purple, I think it is, and um, let's see, Light Lavender. So this is the regular, this isn't the multi-surface, but I, I like the multi-surface as well. Uh, they work just as well. They just have a different sheen. And I'm going to use, this is palette paper, which I have gotten um, into this recently with a um, fine art workshop I'm in, and I really like it. So I started using this in place of the styrofoam plates I used to use, which were not very envir environmentally friendly either, anyway. So I double load my flat brush. This is how I do most of my stroke work, just because I love the way you go from the dark to the light gradually, and it saves you the step of having to come in to shadow and highlight many times, and the effect you can get is really great. Um, my workshop that I take with the Impressionism, I've started to incorporate in it, and it really is cool the how the effects you can get. So let's start with the same stroke that I do in my tutorial on the website, and that is the comma stroke. Now I start on the chisel edge. This edge is the chisel edge, and you notice the paint, it still comes to a point, and I just start on the chisel edge, you press, you see how it leans down, and I drag a little bit, and then I lift the pressure as I come down. Now, depending upon the stroke you're trying to make, you can lengthen that, shorten it, uh, not put as much pressure so it's not as wide. Now, this is on paper, so it's going to create a drag there where it normally wouldn't. Uh, if you're on a really dry surface, a lot of times you can add a little bit more water, or you can use floating medi medium, which I do like. In fact, I'll put some on my palette now and do another stroke. You just, let me show you how, what you do. Here's it right here, it's clear. Now this is the edge that's dry. I just dipped in it. I dipped in my paint and I go work it back and forth. And we'll see how much it helps. We'll just test this. And I press, drag, and lift. I still had a little bit of drag there. But that's okay. You learn to go over your work and you just test it out. Now, I could do the other direction. Now I'm working around my camera, so I'm not exactly at the best angle, but, and there's that direction. I always am reloading my brush because as I make the stroke, the paint comes off of your brush, of course, and that is what you want because you want it to go on the paper or your design. Now, how about a slider leaf? The slider leaf is pretty easy. You can start at a square back and you press, drag, lift, and as I twist my brush, you see that? Now, a lot of people don't like that flat back end. You could also angle your brush a little bit, and then it makes it not flat, and it's more of an angle. Now, you can make this stroke also with a round brush, and it just has a, not a round brush, I'm sorry, a filbert. You can also do it with round, um, and you work with that a little bit. Let me see, oh, I have a filbert here. It's a well-used one, so it might not keep an angle well, but I'll show you what a leaf stroke with the 
filbert looks like. You see it's how it's got the rounded back end. And the filberts, a lot of times, how you would load it is a little bit different. I don't know if I have this even in my post, but I'll show you here. You load one side with the dark color, then one side with the light color. And then you come in and you just press. And you see how it makes the, the variations of colors in there. And you flip it over. And you get the streaks in there, which is which is kind of cool. Now, let's go on and see. We did the slider leaf, we did the comma stroke, and now here is the U stroke. Now, I use the U stroke for the bottom of the bowl of my roses, but you basically start on the chisel edge, slide down, press, and then come back up to the chisel edge. Again, I'm running out of paint because this is paper. I'm trying not to overload my brush. But for some of my roses too, I also wiggle that. So I would come down, wiggle, 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 wiggle. I'm exaggerating it, but that's kind of what I do. And it kind of gives some scalloped edging. Now that's the U. And then you would also do the upside down U which is just the opposite. You just touch, go up, slide, and come down. You do it smoother than I'm doing it. Like I said, I'm kind of at an odd angle because of standing around the camera here. One day I'll have it where it's over my head and I can really do much better videos, but until then, we're gonna wing it. Okay, the flat stroke, which is just super easy. You just touch your brush down drag it, and you can see the graduation of the purples from the dark to the light. And you could also add a third color if you want. If I had white on my palette, I could go ahead and after I look double loaded, just dip this one, the lighter corner in white, and it would add a third color on there. If you need more highlights, sometimes I do that when I'm doing my roses because I need that contrast. Now let's do an S stroke, S stroke. Here, I stand it on my chisel edge, come, slide down, and pull up. I'm not sure that I use the S stroke a lot. I can't really tell you if I do. I, you know I do things so automatically in my painting that I don't always recognize certain strokes. Okay, so here's the other direction. You slide, come down. And you kind of see why it's an S. I did that very sloppily, but lack of control here. Like I said, I don't use them very often, so I'm not really adept at it. Now I'm going to do a really quick demo of a rose where I use quite a few of these strokes. And you can see how they all come together. And I start with an upside down U and sometimes I add a bit of wiggle. And it's kind of a modified U because I'll do a short stroke that's a little bit like a scallop stroke and it's not all the way brought down, um, you know, like this on both sides. But then I connect here, whoops, I want the light on the outside. And then I do a little bit of a wiggle comma stroke. And there I have one arm. And then I do the same on this side. Start to connect with that top stroke and then you come down and you did another comma stroke. It doesn't come down quite as far as the other one, but we'll bring it down. Now this is a very wide bowl of a rose, so we'll make this one a very open rose. And here is um, where I would might add some white. I'm going to show you to add that third color. Here's the white. And I already had loaded with my two colors of purple, the lavender and the purple. And I just touch in the white and I just kind of blend it in there. And it makes it just a little lighter on that edge. And then I'm going to come to a second layer of these strokes. 
And you see I have the two tails there. That's going to come into play later. Again, I'm adding a touch of that white and it gives me a little more contrast against that back color, but you don't have to add the white. It just sometimes adds a little extra lightness there. Now, I can add a third row, which this is really wide, so I will. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to connect it and close it. And all this is is just kind of a little U stroke there. Now those were the comma strokes and kind of a modified upside down U stroke. And then I add more comma strokes. So I come out here and then this side. Now this is very exaggerated. A lot of times I do these tighter, but I'm kind of really just trying to show you the strokes. And you can do another layer here. And you can see I got my brush turned around where I have the dark on the outside. Now normally it would keep the light on the outside, but it doesn't matter. It all comes together in the end. And for the bottom petals, I will do a couple of scallopy U strokes. Some people just call them scallop strokes, but you're kind of um, making them into a U. If you notice, I go down and then bring them up. So that is the scallopy U stroke. And you're going to blend them into your rows in a bit here. So now what are we going to do this? I'm not going to close this upside down U and make it part of the, the um, stroke. It's going to be just inside of this bowl. So I'm going to go and I'm going to catch the tails of this inside stroke of this inside part of the rows. And I'm just, dragging down on the chisel edge and then I flatten my brush. So this is a U-stroke and you see and then I come back up and I didn't catch that other tail. I, I lost my place there and you're going to catch the other tail there of this upside down U-stroke and that makes the inner bowl of the rose. Now this is a spot that I might use some of that white. So I'm going to go back over it so it really highlights that edge. Now you don't have to add any wiggles. You can do this just with the straight strokes, but sometimes the wiggles help to make the petals look pretty. Now here's the outside bowl and here's one tail. The other tail kind of got hidden, but I kind of know where it's going to start from. And I just grab it, pull down, and I'm not going to make this is, I guess this is an S stroke because I pull down, come, and then I'm going to bury it under there. So it looks like that petal is coming down underneath. See, I told you I didn't know where I used them and there it is. Okay. And the same here, I'm going to come down, flatten, and then I'm going to overlap and come down. So like, again, that makes those two strokes overlap. And then I, here's on the inside, I'm going to do another comma stroke. This is inside of this outside arm the first arm we did, and I'm going to pull across. Now that, see how I elongated the tail of that comma stroke? And I'm going to do the same here. Now going backwards is not easy for me, but you get the drift. A lot of times I would turn my work so that I, I could have a better angle or something more comfortable. And I do another one. Here's another comma stroke, which I'm going to do the same thing. This time I will turn my work. So you can see how I would turn it to make it more comfortable for me. Let me move something out of the way. Make sure we're in focus. It's hard on my little screen to see, so hopefully that's in focus. And I'm going to do another comma stroke starting on the outside of that petal. And I'm wiggling it, and then I'm going to drag it across. Now it may look kind of funky with all that open, but you can just do um, some chisel strokes and to fill that in little chisel strokes and make some look like more petals. You'd be surprised at how it fills it in. And there you have the rose. Now, if this little spot bothers you as far as you can just add a little petal there. And that is how I use most of my strokes. Now for the leaves, I would use the leaf stroke and for roses, I would draw a stem 
and then I would add five. I'm not following through there. Follow through leaves. Or I would do um, my scallop leaf. Now you'll notice that it's starting to get kind of chunky here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Now when it starts to do that, that means too much paint is in the brush. You go, you rinse out your brush. This is what I love my brush caddy for because it really helps get that paint out. And you'll notice now I'm back to a nice chisel edge and you just reload and then you have the nice um, sharp edges again and you don't have a bunch of paint up in your brush. A lot of times it'll start to harden up in your brush and that's what will spread your bristles apart and then you lose the ability to keep a chisel edge. Now if you want me to show you, I will show you in this just because. Let me see, here we go. I'm going to show you my scallop leaf stroke. And it's just, you wiggle, 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 and you pull to a point. You're twisting your brush as you, see I set it down, wiggle, 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 as you come to the point. I'm sorry, I never finish sentences. There, and you just let it come up and you have the chisel edge. You don't have to have that long of a point, but you get the picture. And if you've seen my rose videos, um, normally I like to start the leaves underneath and then have the rose petals come over top and that way it uh, looks like it's sitting behind the rose. And for me, I just like that effect. And that is my basic strokes. I, I don't know if I did it in my other tutorial, but I will. Here, I mean, I showed you that vine, but you just drag four lines like for veins and leaves or the stems and you want to drag it so that it's kind of tilted up that way it's the back it's the back part that's pulling and then to change colors you just switch and you see how one is darker than the other you just flip your brush over for that and I do believe that those are the basic strokes I leave I use um, I may have said it before and I can't remember you could do these same strokes with different brushes, a round brush and a filbert brush, and you'll just get a little bit of a different effect. Um, I like to use filberts for daisies. I have also done them with the flat brushes. It depends on the type of daisy I want to do. Um, the round brush I don't use a whole lot, but I have incorporated a little bit, and some of my tutorials may have me using the round brush, but usually I'll show you any difference in a stroke that it may take uh, in those individual videos. But these are the basic movements I make in all of my painting tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe and follow me on my blog website and share with your friends.